Hi there, welcome to How to Make a Market Basket, section three. This is the third of a six part series on how to weave your own market basket. If you want to see the full course with all the course material, check the link in the description below. That will lead you to the full course on my website. Check above for the first and second videos in this series on uh, preparing your materials and getting the base ready for weaving. And today in this segment of the series, we'll be going over how to weave the walls of your basket. So how to use quarter inch flat oval reed um, to build the walls of your basket. So I hope you're able to join me in this process and enjoy the process of your weaving. Let's get started. Now my first row of this basket will be a piece of, of half inch flat reed. And I want this to be wet before I start weaving with it. So I'm going to place it in my bucket of water. Set that over here. And before I get started here, I'm also going to lift this back into the water carefully. And this should be easier because your twining has held everything in place. So lift it over and gently... Get the stakes wet again. This also works well if you have a spray bottle of water. You can simply spray the base of the stakes instead of having to lift it up. Now this is your last chance to adjust your base the way you would like it to be set. So just take a look. Okay, I'm happy with that there. So now we're going to upset the stakes. And upsetting is a term that just means lifting the stakes up and folding them over so that they create the wall. So I'm going to lift this up and very slowly and gently crimp it down so that it folds up and it'll stand up more vertically like that. I'm going to go around the perimeter, upsetting the stakes, just like this. You're just creating a crease in the stake so that you can start to build the walls and you have a nice angle from the base to the wall. So I'm holding with two fingers underneath and I'm going to crimp with my thumb, pinching the reed as I fold it over and then just kind of pressing it down with your fingers and let it release. And do this all the way around. If you start to hear a little bit of a cracking noise as you fold over, just be more gentle. You don't want to crack off one of your stakes or else you'll have to pull it out and thread in a new one, which isn't hard, it's just annoying. I also want to say basket weaving can be hard on your hands, especially your cuticles. I get pretty pretty dry fingers once I've done some basket weaving. So I like to um, use some lotion afterwards. It can, the reed starts to rub against your cuticles and you can get hangnails and um, it can start to hurt. So just be aware it's going to be rough on your hands. Okay. So I've upset all my stakes. The walls will lift up like this. Have my creases in place. Now we're ready to start weaving and it'll start to look more like a basket. I'm gonna grab my half inch flat reed out of the water. Just kind of shake it off a little bit. And now we're gonna start weaving the basket. So, Position yourself so you're comfortable. And we're going to start on the side facing you. 
So we're going to weave this way and then work around clockwise. So I'm going to grab one of my little clamps and I'm going to start with one end of my flat reed. And I'm going to clamp it onto the outside of one of these stakes. So I'm going to choose a stake that's right next to the handle because I want at least three stakes to the left of where I'm working for when I come back around. So I'm going to position that there and then clamp it into place. And then start an over behind or over under pattern. So I'm over this stake here. The handle is going to function as a stake as well. So I'm going to go behind the handle and thread my reed through. It would be easier to just stick the reed behind the handle and then clamp it to your stake like so. Now you're behind your handle. You're going to lift this one up and you're going to come in front of this stake. And you want to press your reed, your weaver reed. That's the half inch flat reed that we're working with. You want to have it come right to the base of where your twining is. So it's going to be behind this stake and then in front of the next one. So the, the stakes that are that you've put the weaver behind are going to fall down because nothing's holding them up. And then here at the corner, this reed is just going to fall down. So I'm going to lift it up here and I'm going to use it as a guide to create a corner with my reed. So I'm going to fold my weaver reed back to create a crease. And that is my corner now. And then I'm going to rotate the basket so that I'm working with the wall of the basket that I'm working with towards me. So that's behind. Now I'm going to move this in front of the next stake around the corner. Work behind and then lift this one up to work in front. And then behind and in front. And you, to start out, you want to put a clamp at each side to hold it in place. Hold your weaver in place as you work. So behind and in front, rotate, and then create the crease here. And then we'll go behind this stake, lift this one up to go in front, keeping my corner tight. And then going through the handle once again. Like so. We'll work behind this stake and then in front of this stake. And here on this side, we can put a clamp in place behind this stake and in front and rotate and then create a crease here like so and then behind and in front keep weaving all the way around. Again, last corner. I'm going to put a clamp here to hold it in place. Create my corner crease. Now to do this last section, we're going to end up overlapping this reed or the weaver where we started. So we want to have overlap four stakes and we'll include the handle as one of the stakes. So one, two, three, four. We want to bring the weaver all the way to this fourth stake 
and we're going to tuck it behind. So weave as you have been. It might help to throw a clamp in here near the corner to hold that in place. And now I'm going to measure it out and then cut it. That way I can weave it slightly easier. So over to the fourth stake over and clip to the outside of this stake. So one, two, three, and four. I'm gonna hold that in place, line it up with the stake, and then cut it so that it's to the outside of this stake. And then I'll take this end and where we started, I'm gonna overlap that, tuck it between the handle and our starter reed, our st where we started, over this reed, and then tuck it behind that stake there. So it'll be hidden behind this stake right here. And everything seems quite wonky at this moment. Move this over here as all of the stakes are going every which way. And this weaver is just holding things up. Once we have a couple of rows, everything will start to stand straight up and be more organized and look better. But that's our first row and our start of our weaving. So our next couple of rows will be a half oval reed. And that is a reed that's flat on one side and is rounded on the other. So the end has a curved look. I'm gonna move my basket out of my way and untie this. And before we start weaving again, I want to get everything wet. So I'm gonna untangle a piece right here, put it in my water. And I'm going to grab a couple of pieces here because we're going to weave several rows of this half oval. Okay, and when that's in the water, set this bundle aside for the moment. Bring these out. And tap them off, set these aside, and then stick your basket in the water to get the steak sweat again. Okay, so you ended on one side and we're gonna rotate a quarter turn like so. And I'm gonna start on this side here. I want to always keep in mind that I need four stakes to the right in order to overlap what I'm weaving so that it doesn't come undone. So, what that looks like is taking the end of my half oval, I'm gonna lift this up on its side and I'm gonna work kind of on its side gently, resting it against one end, start to build the basket up this way. I'm gonna unclip this clamp and set it aside for a second. And now again, thinking about that four stakes, I wanna start on a stake on an over so where it went behind on the last weaver, I'm going to start in front. And I'm going to use my clamp to clamp that down like so. And then start weaving. So I start over, I'm going to go behind and push down so that everything's tight. I'm going to lay this down here and you position the basket, whatever, whatever way is easiest for you to do your weaving. <clears throat> I'm 
rotate it as I go. And here I'm going to crimp the corner in just like we did on the flat reed. So you turn the corner and pull that in. And keep your corners tight. You don't want them to bubble out. So keep them tight. As we build the walls, the tension that you use to weave will determine how tight and how the walls of the basket start to curve in or stay straight up. So we'll work on that as we go, the tension on the weaver reed. So I'm working in front, behind, in front, behind. And I'm gonna continue all the way around, going over the handle, treating it as a stake. around this corner, gently bend around the corner there, come around, and here there are some spaces here, I'm going to pull down on the reed and try to pull that tight, we'll continue to pack it as we build layers. Um, Remove clips out of the way. Move this clamp. Again, the corner, crimp it. Then we're back to where we started, so I'm going to move this clamp to the end here. Press everything down and come around the corner. And then go four stakes over, so one, two, three. And we're going to go behind the fourth. So I'm going to lay this flat, cut it to the outside of the stake, and then weave it over top of what I've already woven. And then tuck it behind. And there's your second row. So our next couple of rows will be a half oval reed and that is a reed that's flat on one side and is rounded on the other so the end has a curved look. I'm going to move my basket out of my way and untie this. And before we start weaving again I want to get everything wet so I'm going to Untangle a piece right here, put it in my water, and I'm going to grab a couple of pieces here because we're going to weave several rows of this half oval. Okay, and when that's in the water, set this bundle aside for the moment. Bring these out and tap them off. Set these aside and then stick your basket in the water to get the steak sweat again.
Okay, so you ended on one side and we're gonna rotate a quarter turn like so. And I'm gonna start on this side here. I want to always keep in mind that I need four stakes to the right in order to overlap what I'm weaving so that it doesn't come undone. So what that looks like is taking the end of my half oval, I'm gonna lift this up on its side and I'm gonna work kind of on its side gently, resting it against one end, start to build the basket up this way. I'm gonna unclip this clamp and set it aside for a second. And now, again, thinking about that four stakes, I wanna start on a stake Now we're gonna start weaving with the quarter inch, half oval. So I'm gonna set the basket up on one end, steady it here, and then I'm gonna start weaving from this end. I did my quarter turn, so this is where I left off before. I'm gonna leave off or start off and leave off here. So bring it up here and I'm gonna start on an over so where it went behind on the last weaver I'm going to start in front and I'm going to use my clamp to clamp that down like so and then start weaving so I start over I'm going to go behind and push down so that everything's tight I'm going to lay this down here and you position the basket whatever whatever way is easiest for you to do your weaving. <clears throat> Rotate it as I go and here I'm going to crimp the corner in just like we did on the flat reed. So you turn the corner and pull that in and keep your corners tight. You don't want them to bubble out so keep them tight. As we build the walls, the tension that you use to weave will determine how tight and how the walls of the basket start to curve in or stay straight up. So we'll work on that as we go, the tension on the weaver reed. So I'm working in front, behind, in front, behind. And I'm gonna continue all the way around, going over the handle, treating it as a stake. And around this corner, gently bend around the corner there. Come around. And here, there are some spaces here. I'm gonna pull down on the reed and try to pull that tight. We'll continue to pack it as we build layers. Um, remove clips out of the way. Move this clamp. Again, the corner, crimp it. Then we're back to where we started. So I'm gonna move this clamp to the end here. Press everything down and come around the corner. And 
and then go four stakes over. So one, two, three, and we're going to go behind the fourth. So I'm going to lay this flat, cut it to the outside of the stake, and then weave it over top of what I've already woven. And then tuck it behind. And there's your second row. We'll continue weaving the walls just like that using the half oval quarter inch reed. So I'll grab another piece here. And we left off on this side here. So I'm going to turn it quarter turn and start here. I want to have four stakes to my right. So I'll start and I'll start on a stake that the reed is going behind on the last row. So right here, stakes behind. So I'll clamp this on and I'll clamp it on in front. And I'm referencing from the outside of the basket, not from the inside. Clipped here, I'm gonna go behind here. And as I go, I'm pressing down the layers. I'm gonna go under the handle, thread my weaver through here. then over and under. And you're just weaving opposite of the last weaver you did. So if you went over before, you're going to go under now. Turn it as you go. If you want crisp corners, then add a little pinch to add a corner to your reed. If you prefer rounded corners, then just go ahead and weave around and allow it to round itself. And under the handle here. And I'm continuing to use my hands to press and pull and reposition things to the shape that I want them to be in. And I'll do that through the whole process. But these first rows are the most difficult to get everything into the place you want them to be because um, everything's not in the shape that it's going to end up in yet. You're establishing that right now. Pressing down here. This also is a time you can use your tool. Remove this clean. Use your packing tool. When I get to where I left off, I'm going to weave up until I reach the end. Measure out four, which happens to be behind, to be behind the handle this time. I'm going to clip to the outside of that, or cut the reed to the outside. And then weave it over top of where I started and tuck the end here underneath. Okay, and that's our third row. So we'll just continue doing that to build up the walls and working on keeping an even tension so that we're not pulling the walls in too dramatically. So left off here, I'm going to quarter turn and start on this side. Remembering I want four stakes to the right. That looks pretty good. A 
go over the handle this time. We hide behind the stakes on either side. And I'm continually adjusting the stakes. If they aren't going straight up and down, I'm going to pull them to go vertically. If the layers aren't as tight as I want them to be, I'll pack them down with my fingers or with the tool. Lay out my four, cut to the outside, and stick behind and over top of what I've already done. Left off here, so quarter turn. I'm going to start on this side. I'm pulling just slightly on the weaver, this right here that I'm weaving with. And this will pull in the walls, but I'm not pulling so hard that it's going to bow in. Just giving it a ni nice tension so that it keeps the walls going straight up and down. And that sometimes takes practice. If you don't get it the first time, you can always unweave a few rows and then reweave them. I'm going to cut off some tails here. Okay, so I'm going to run out of my weaver here before I get to where I started. So I'll show you how to add in a new piece when your piece is too short. So here I ended on a corner. I don't typically want to end on a corner, so I'm going to back it up and I'm going to bring it to here so it's on top on top of the stake and I'm going to slide my scissors in there and cut it to the outside like I would if I was ending or starting. I'm going to take another piece of flat oval reed and I'm going to do the same thing that I would do if I was ending to start. So I'm going to count over one, two, three, four and I'm going to tuck it behind those four. So tuck it behind the handle and then weave it on top of what I've already woven here so that that end gets tucked under my new weaver. And keep weaving just like you would normally. And then again, when you get to your overlap section, cut it at four over. And tuck it behind.
What I'm doing here is just adjusting where the stakes are to adjust the spacing, get them back to where I want to be, want them to be. You can do the adjustments as you get more layers going, as you have more rows woven, because it starts to hold the stakes in place and they won't move out of where you place them.
Now, when you get to a point where you have a about an inch and a half to two inches between your last weaver and where the curve of your handle starts, so right about here, we're going to weave in a couple rows of seagrass. And this is the seagrass. We'll also incorporate this into the rim. And I'm going to open this up. And we'll use it just like we did with the reed. Weaving it into the walls of the basket. I'm going to start quarter turn from where I left off. So I left off here. I'm going to start here. And I'm going to take the end of the reed and I'm going to tuck it behind, just slightly tucked in, behind a stake, like so. And then I'm going to weave it like a normal reed, clamping it in place. And then weave behind and front. Just like before, go over the handle. And we'll do three rows of the seagrass. So when you reach where you've started out, Unclamp it, and you're going to stick it behind so it's inside, and then you'll clip it right behind that stake. So you have about a half an inch on the inside overlapping. Quarter turn from where you left off, tuck it behind. And then keep weaving. I'll stick the whole bundle behind the handle and through so it ends up behind. Clamp my beginning and weave all the way around. When you reach where you started, you can clip it to the outside edge and then tuck it behind, or tuck it behind and then clip it. So that's row two, quarter turn. Let's do the last row. Tuck it behind, clamp it in place, and weave from there. A little tail here, so I'm just going to clip that off. Okay, that's our three rows of seagrass. Now, before we move on, it's feeling a little bit dry, so I'm going to stick it in the water again, get the steaks all wet. Okay. 
Okay, and then we're going to weave one last row of the flat oval reed. Now we're done weaving the walls. We're going to move on to working on the rim. Thanks for watching. I hope you're able to join me in making your own market basket. Subscribe below so that you get notified of the next videos in this series. And like this video, that would support my channel and support me. I'd really appreciate that. And I hope you are enjoying this process. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.